take on it? What do you even think? Do you, do you remember much of what was going on, or did the impact kind of knock you out a little bit, or no? Uh, so it knocked me out. I don't remember anything about the wreck at all. Um, probably about a lap prior, I remember racing in traffic, uh, and then the next thing I know, I'm getting loaded onto a stretcher. So I feel like it's so weird. Like obviously my body was working, and I was somewhat alert to be able to, you know, even get help back to the stretcher in the ambulance, but. I just like having a hard time recalling any of that. Um, a lot of people ask me, you know, how that felt or, or what I think about it now. And it's, it's just like, it's a tough place to be in, not, not really knowing anything or having any recollection of any of the crash at all. Whether it broke or not, I can't really tell my team one way or another. Um, I assume something broke, but everything's so wrecked that it's hard to really say one way or another. Too. What are some of the thoughts? I mean, it looks, a lot of people thought stop, something on the right rear, maybe uh, some people are saying steering, possibly something in the, in the locked up. Is there any indication of what happened, or? So, like, we think maybe something like on the front end, um, or maybe the steering box. But we set the steering box off. It's hard though, man. Like the half miles were going so fast, mm -hmm. and so much got and, destroyed. Obviously, yeah, everything's like disintegrated. So it's like all the stops, all the arms were still on. Um, so it's not, it wasn't anything that fell off in that regard. I feel like it's something that mechanically just broke and um, yeah, I ended up going right into the wall pretty much head on wide open so I don't know if I was wide open I hope I wasn't um, right but uh, ultimately like I don't really remember so. well you can watch video obviously yeah. um it seems like you took it in decent spirits the Ayrton Genitin tweet seemed to get yeah. some uh, how is it so easy to just turn around is that what you got to be to be a, a sprint car guy you just they always say, you know, when you strap in a sprint car, you halfway accept the worst could end today. Like, yeah. it's just that type of racing, you know? I think that, like, I mean, look at tonight, right? Like, I'm running second. It's been out all by myself. It cost my team a good run. cost myself a good run. And, like, one thing you can do is just wipe it clean and start over and just get the best run out of it that you can. And I feel like it's the same with that crash. Like, I just, yeah, I mean, obviously it hurt in many regards. You know, I, I lost some points lead. Uh, you know, I had to go to the hospital. I'm dealing with all the stuff that came with it now. Obviously, wrapping up burns every day, and you know, dealing with my rib and some of that. But ultimately, like, I'm thank God that I'm still here, and, right? And I can still race. You know, I could have been in a spot where my arm or my leg was broken. Or if the car lands upside down, that, so. imagine how you yeah. know horrible that would have been. You know, so, like you look back at the wreck too, and like you know, my car landed in a really good spot. Like it landed forward like it was going still around the track so the fuel was kind of burning to the left back side of me. right um, you know I was on my wheels which was a blessing uh, and you know I, I could have been way way worse so um, I guess that's the way I look at it I mean the fact like Jonathan's deal and the tweets like you know what happened it is what it is well they said he's so, on fire lately and you were yeah, like well yeah. I've been on fire it's right. not that great it just happened it is what it is and so I'm just you know, it's, I thought it would was there a lot of positives out of that situation? Yeah. I'm assuming you had a bunch of people checking on you that you may not, not never, you may have guys you had an issue with or yeah. a disagreement with or a fight. They may not have liked you. Now all of a sudden they're like, hope you're okay. Yeah. So there had to be some positives out of the whole situation as well. Yeah, I mean, I think sprint car racing is is tough, right? Because like it's such a cutthroat deal at this level. We're all battling. I mean, I know it looks like you know nobody should ever make a mistake, but the, the truth is, is that we're out there running 150 percent every lap, and shit happens, you know. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I think no matter what, though, no matter how much you're upset with somebody, or maybe you have that rivalry, or whatever it might be, like you see somebody getting an accident like that. I know I wouldn't want to see my worst enemy, you know, have that happen. So, right. Um, and I'd get out of my car and try to help them no matter what. You know, you never want to see anything detrimental or, or, or anything like that happen to another racer. Um, we all do it for a living and we all have, we don't know we have families. And, right. You know, I mean, the last thing you want to do is see somebody get hurt or, or even pass away. Well, it had to feel good. To, I'm sure everyone reached out. Uh, yeah. And obviously the situation is what it was. How, how have you come out the other end of it, though? Have you thought about what's what to do? Some people think you shouldn't even race a sprint car again. That's not worth it. Is it just that love for the sport that keeps you going? Yeah, I mean, I love sprint car racing. If I, You're the if baddest I, asses on the planet. We know this. If I didn't love it, then I wouldn't do it. You know what I mean? I'd go do something else. I feel like you could make a lot more money, you know, running a business or doing something else. But yeah, I love sprint car racing. I love every aspect of it. I love battling for a World of Outlaw Championship and I guess for me like that's 
you know, what matters to me more than anything. Like, everyone asks me, you know, are you going to come back and race Friday at Beaver Dam? It's like, well, of course I am if I'm able to because I, right. I still would love to try. You know, that's my ultimate goal in the sport. I'd love to one day accomplish it. So the fact that I'm like, you know, obviously now I'm not leading. I'm, I'm back a little ways. But, you know, I, I, I'm Too in Too bad you ain't got to chase, you know, yeah. or you can, like the late mall guys, they got to yeah. chase now or they lock guys in and you race. But yeah. it, it, it's interesting how everything worked out. The fire suppression deal became a topic. Yeah, flew out of the car. Right, yeah. I mean, and that was a debatable deal and to enforce that at all. I mean, I talked to Cody about it. He thinks that organizations who want to make fire safety a priority they should bring fire safety people with them to each track because luckily it was at knoxville which is one of the best fire safety crews in the country y'all go to some tracks where it's not like knoxville yeah, and if that wasn't the case you know i mean fire suppression or not there's just some wrecks in these cars at the beginning of the race where they got a full tank of methanol you got to have knoxville style fire safety crew to really do something about it yeah and i mean I'm thankful there was a Knoxville, you know, Knoxville, Eldora, um, probably Houston. I mean, like, there's a few tracks that you're like, you yeah, know, Med Star here. If you I'm know, I'm gonna have a massive wreck, I'm hoping it's one of them, you know. So, but that's kind of his point: is the outlaws yeah. should have a team that comes with them everywhere. Yeah. I mean, I I think that uh, you know maybe my wreck will help that happen. I, I don't right, know. that's true. Like, that's I, true. I, I, that's all I can hope for. But um, I feel like. You know, for me, I'm thankful that it was at Knoxville. I mean, I'm, I'm obviously, you know, the whole fire suppression deal flying out of the car, like hopefully that can be fixed as well, you know? Like, right. Hopefully that doesn't happen for the next guy because they make a better mount or, a high, you know, I don't know. Well, it's but, still a sprint car slamming a wall yeah. at Knoxville. How are you going to, there's yeah. not too much stuff. I mean, chassis bend and break. How are you going to, yeah. Like ultimately you know. too, like there's a lot of people just, you know, totally bashing the fire suppression system deal and like what, you know, what a ways to fly out of the car, but like, some of this is a little bit R&D. Like, if everything was perfect the first time, well, then they would just put people in, ask, in rockets that go to the moon the first right, time. Right, true. Right, so, like... It's the just, Titanic thing. I mean, yeah, look like, at I that. Mean, I mean... Stuff isn't perfect, and so, you know, I think everybody's trying to do their best, I think, for the most part, and hopefully people can learn something from my crash. I feel like I'm very lucky that I came out on the right side of it. And right. That's all I can say, really, I guess. Okay. And as far as this race this week, how hard is it dealing with that inversion? Seems yeah. tough. I mean, outlaws are used to a format. You qualify well, you start at front, you go. This inversion deal it seems to throw the sprint car guys a curveball just a little bit because you're not used to it. And it's hard to pass here. I mean, it just depends. Like, this track is, is very, it can be super racy. In my heat tonight, it was racy. You know, but maybe the first heat, it wasn't quite as racy, you know? So I feel like, uh, you know, you just got to be on top of, of that. You got you to be on your toes all the time because your opportunity comes up, you got to make the most of it. And I feel like it's a fine line. Like you probably want to qualify six realistically. Right. You're going to be in that last seat, maybe a little bit more racing. Like right. I kind of lucked out with that tonight. But then it's such a point still um, too. It, it's yeah, points you based. You good, you know, but then you're, you know, you get set back in your heat. So, you know, ultimately though, like, you know, I mean, this is what it is. Like Todd Quarren putting up the money. Is, right. And, you, you, you can make the format whatever the hell you want. You can so, make it for the drivers and make yeah. it for the fans. I'm sure they enjoy yeah. seeing Larson and y'all deep in a field yeah. having to race to go through a field instead of just single filing out out front like a typical outlaw race is. You get so many fast guys up there. We get these formats from time to time, but it's not consistent. You know, we get a Kings Roll format, a Knoxville Nationals format, and outside of that, there's really a, a standard format, and that's the outlaw format. So it just it seems like maybe it – Whereas the late mall community, they deal with this stuff all the time, but the sprint car community, it's so rare to have a different format than the standard that it just throws people off for a, cor a curveball in a way. Yeah. I mean, I feel like the World of Outlaw format, in my opinion, is the best format. Okay. But but I race for a living. Right. You know I mean, like, right. I, like and we, we put a huge emphasis on qualifying. So, like, I show up every night to try and do my best and qualify and qualify as well as I can, and then you get rewarded. I started on the right. front row of the heat, you know, so, um, yeah, uh, I personally like it. I do it for a living, and I feel like my car, and, and I have, both Philip, you know, Clyde, Nate, everybody on JGR team and myself have put an emphasis on qualifying, so we like it, but, um, you know, if people want to put up money like Todd Queering, and they want to put on an amazing event, well, then I think they should be able to, you know, make the format whatever they want. Lend so. to the fans a little bit yeah. more, put y'all in a hard spot, or you got to be on the edge every single lap, yeah. you know. Yeah, so. exactly. Okay. Well, you're good? No hobbling? No, I'm doing all right, man. Okay, not like me, you know. Yeah. You're a little skinnier, at least. You're doing all right. Uh, oh, I am? Okay. okay.